Let me briefly sketch how the JPEG2 arithmetic bitmap decoding works. So JPEG2 has many, many other parts, but today we will mostly be concerned with the so-called generic uh, bitmap decoding. First, we are talking about the bitmap decoder. So at the end, the, the output of the decoder will be a bitmap, which is just a rectangular array of pixels. And each of these pixels, in our case, is, it is a two-level bitmap, so every pixel can either be black or white. So we will have some, I should really use the bucket, I guess. That did not work as expected, that did. So we will have some uh, black pixels and some white pixels. And <clears throat> yeah, that's the output. Uh, the input is a data stream, so it's also a, a stream of zeros and ones, but they do not correspond directly in any way to these pixels. So that is our input. It is a stream of bits. Sorry, why do I write so badly? A stream. Okay, and in the middle we have the decoder. And how does it work? Well, the decoder consists of two important pieces. <clears throat> it consists of something that we could uh, call the context gatherer. and the, the decoder proper, so the actual arithmetic uh, decoder. <clears throat> and yeah, so the arithmetic decoder is a sub-block and there is a data structure before it, the array of contexts. Okay, and how do things work? <clears throat> the basic ideas are rather simple. So what the context gather, the gatherer, uh, as I would call it, what that does is <clears throat> it looks at the values of previously decoded pixels. And for doing that, it has a so-called template. And the template is a geometric shape of pixels where one pixel is the current pixel that is the currently uh, of the pixel being currently decoded. So the pixels are decoded um, in reading sequence so from top to bottom and within that from left to right let's say and there is always one current pixel that is currently being decoded and the others are not yet known. So I have already filled in the bitmap here, but now you should imagine that, uh, sorry, yeah, let's draw it like this. You should imagine that we have decoded up to here this is the pixel with the circle, is the pixel we are currently working on. The other ones below 
those are currently unknown. So let's let's gray them out somehow. Um, so everything below here, this is actually unknown territory. And above, that is known. So this is the part of the pixel that we, uh, of the pit, bit, sorry, of the bitmap that we already know. And now the context gatherer has a so-called template <coughs> that is a geometric pattern around this current pixel. It could look something like that. I will draw a simple instance of this pattern. Could look like that. And what the context gatherer does is it places, so conceptually, it places this template here at the current location. Like this. And it looks at the values of these already decoded pixels. And so we have a zero here, which so in JPEG2, white is zero and, and black is one. So we would have these values here. So zero, one, zero, 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 unknown. And from these values, it builds a number, the so-called context, or context index simply by putting these bit values in some well-defined order. So the order is always the same. It's not specified by the standard, so you can do that like as, as you want. It does not affect the, the actually decoded output. You just need to assign them to fixed bit positions. So we could do just read the bits one of the, the other and our context would be binary zero one zero 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 so um, the number eight decimal would be our context index so let's call this the context index this context index is therefore a summary of the local history around this pixel around the current pixel. Uh, this context index is used as an index into the array of context. So we have a, an array of many contexts. If we have, for example, for this simple template, we have one, two, three, four, five bits. So in this case, we would have 32 of these contexts. Actually, they are much more, so you can have up to up to 64k of these contexts, which is one of the reasons that JB2 decoding is slow because this is quite a lot of data. So you need one byte approximately per context. So my implementation uses one byte per context and that will likely remain so. So I think you cannot do much better than one byte per context. So what is this context good for? The context stores the probability estimation used by the arithmetic decoder in order to decode a single bit. And this works roughly in the following way. So the, the bit stream comes in. Now I, yeah, I did not draw it very nicely. So this does just cross, this has no interaction here. So maybe I should I should erase some things here. Why? Why does erasing not work? That is strange. So I will just paint with white. There was some kind of cloning going on here. Or maybe I'm, do we see the, the layer below? I, I don't know. I have no idea how GIMP works. So 
we will not draw this like the electronic engineers, but <laughs> like a little bridge. Um, the arithmetic decoder receives this long bit stream, so this is a very long number normally, and interprets this as a basically as a float, floating point number. So this is then interpreted as 0 0.1100100 and so on. This is the so-called C register that you will see in the code then also. So it's not a CPU register, it's called a register in the decoder, it's just a variable. <clears throat> and you can hope that it will be register located somehow. So at least, at least a certain part of that is in C, because of course this is a, a very long number that can have tens of thousands of binary digits, and you can only store so many in, in this, this variable. So actually only up to 32 in our case, um, a C is a 32 bit type, and actually only 16 bits of those are used for the algorithm directly. Okay, and we interpret this number successively by doing successive interval subdivision. I will not go completely into the whole topic. Um, let me very briefly say what the idea is. This is a previous drawing that I made. The idea is that you um, you interpret the incoming stream as a floating point number that specifies a point in an interval between 0 and roughly 1. Actually, it is 0 and a number called A, a number called A that is the interval length, which is around 1. So it's actually from 0.75 to 1.5 stored in fixed point format and your in, your encoded uh, stream is is a number somewhere in this range and at every step whenever you decode a bit you divide the interval into two halves one is called the the, in, the lps interval that is the the interval for the less probable symbol and the mps which is the more probable symbol one of them is zero and one of them is one and which is the case is encoded in the context. So that is one that is one of the things that the context does. The context gives the more probable symbol to the arithmetic decoder. So which one is more prob probable, zero or one? Um, it also gives an estimate called QE of the probability of having the less probable symbol. So QE is the estimated probability to get the other symbol, not the more probable one, but the less probable one. And at every decoding step, you, the decoder gets these numbers from the, from the context that are estimated, and it will divide this interval in such a way that the LPS part is a fraction of the interval corresponding to QE. So if QE is, for example, 0.25, so a quarter, then the LPS interval will be a quarter, roughly a quarter, because there are some inaccuracies in the implementation, but roughly a quarter of this interval. And then the algorithm checks where this number c that we got in, so uh, we did get in some number c, so let me um, let me add that. In a different color maybe. So the number c is somewhere in this interval, let's say it's here. And then the decoder checks which interval does, does this number fall into. Does it fall into the larger MPS interval or the smaller LPS interval? If it falls into the MPS interval, the result of decoding this, this one bit will be the MPS, whatever that is. If it falls into the LPS interval, the result will be the other 
symbol, so the LPS. And this is done for every step and at each step there can be a different probability estimate can be used for decoding this. So that's a very rough sketch of how the arithmetic decoder works. And then there is a feedback loop in the whole thing. So at certain steps, the arithmetic decoder updates the probability estimates and maybe also the MPS. So th this means it uses these values for decoding a bit. Okay, I should, I should show this. So it decodes actually a, a bit. This is called D usually in, in our code. And this bit is the value of this pixel here which will be either one or zero. It also, as a secondary output, it may, it may update, so the, the bit comes out always, but sometimes it will update the context information. Uh, and this is because what the arithmetic decoder here does with this estimation of the MPS and the QE mirrors exactly or duplicates except or reproduces exactly what the encoder did. So the same, the same algorithm for probability estimation is implemented in the encoder and the decoder. And so the, the decoder updates its estimate it uses a little state machine for that and puts the context, so this single context, into a new state, depending on what happened in the decoding. And the important thing is that <clears throat> the, all the updates of this context array are completely um, deterministic and they happen exactly in the same way in both the encoder and the decoder. And therefore the arithmetic decoder part knows that these values that it uses are the same that the encoder used to encode the specific bit that we are at. And so it can reliably decode the bit and then the whole thing iterates. So we have now a decoding, let's say it is a one bit. And what happens now is that this whole template is shifted by one pixel. So the new template will be shifted typically to the right, sometimes also to the right and to the left and down when we start the new row, will be shifted by one pixel to the right and a new context value will be, new context index will be read and a different, maybe a different entry will be used in this array and the arithmetic decoder will do its thing and everything iterates. And this is done for every single pixel. Um, and there are certain multiple aspects of this whole procedure that make it not difficult to implement, it's actually rather simple to implement as you will see, but difficult to make it fast because I have not even told you the worst thing about these templates. The worst thing about these templates is that they, first they are different ones, which is not that bad, they are different known ones and these templates are also adaptive. They have some pixels that can be moved. So, for example, this pixel might be an adaptive pixel. And thank God it's not dynamically adaptive, so it does not change during the decoding of the image, but it can be different for different images. So this pixel could actually be not here, but for example, somewhere up here. It can be as far as 128 pixels away and 128 rows above. Uh, and that is certainly something that makes things difficult because you need, in order to decode this pixel here, you need to really um, reach 
far back into the data that might not even be anymore in first level cache, for example. And you need to read this, this value. And this can be in a very large um, area here. So that's one thing that makes it really slow. The other thing that can make it slow is that these context arrays can be really big. They can be 64 kilobytes. And 64 kilobytes may not sound a lot for a modern computer, but it is larger than the first level cache, cache of most CPUs that you have available today. So already we know for sure that for many of these um, images, if they use the large templates, that the context will not fit in the first level cache and so on. So also the arithmetic decoder itself has a rather complicated decision tree inside and decisions, you know, unpredictable decisions are very slow on modern CPUs. So predictable decisions are okay that most of the time happen in the same way, but these are decisions that will vary a lot and such unpredictable decisions um, are costly. Okay, that was my summary of how the generic bitmap decoding works. And if you have any questions, please drop them in the chat. If not, we will quickly look at the code that actually implements this. <clears throat> 